Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to share five picture books that are great for teaching your students all about perseverance. Now, the way I describe perseverance to my own children and students in the classroom is continuing to work on something even when it's difficult or might take longer to get to than you initially thought. And it's such an important skill for our students to understand. One of my children, I will not name, has a little bit of trouble even starting something if they think it's going to be difficult because many things in his life have come natural to him um, and have come quickly to him. But sometimes if something is, you know, slightly difficult or for even for season the future that it might be difficult, he kind of just brushes it off. And you know, as a parent, I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Let's work on some grit here, some determination, some perseverance. Let's try it out and let's continue to learn and get better at something even when it's difficult. Before I dive into these five books, I do wanna let you know that I have compiled an entire playlist of picture book recommendations over here um, that you can check out. I'll link it down in the description. In those videos, I share mentor text lists for things like my favorite books when teaching opinion writing, my favorite books to teach about friendship or honesty. I have a bunch of different recommendations over there if you're looking for a quick skill to teach. All right, if you're ready to hear these five books, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Let's dive in. First recommendation I want to share with you is Emmanuel's Dream. This is the true story of Emmanuel Ofosu Yeboa. And this book I believe I also shared in my growth mindset uh, books because our growth mindset is, you know, coupled with perseverance. We will get there yet, the power of yet, we can do hard things. And this book is a great illustration of that. This story shares how Emmanuel was born in Ghana with only one working leg. And many people, you know, thought because of that that he would be useless. And some people even thought he was a curse. But Emmanuel's mother always told him that he could do anything, but he would have to do it himself. So he learned how to crawl and how to hop and how to earn money, and he even went to school. At the time, most of the kids with disabilities did not go to school, and he was too heavy to be carried to school each day, so Emmanuel's mother told him that he has to go on his own. So from then, he actually hopped to school all the way and back, which was two miles each way. At first, many peers didn't want to play with him, but he showed his classmates that he could play soccer, even with his crutches lunging around, spinning on them. He earned a lot of respect. Emmanuel even did what others thought was impossible, and he learned how to ride a bike. Throughout the story, he does deal with some grief at the loss of his mother, but his mother's last words were, do not give up. And so he came up with the plan to bicycle around Ghana. He eventually got a bike and started training for his long ride. Even though some people still believed he couldn't do it, he was gaining support rapidly and showing people that he could do anything. He was breaking barriers and showing other people that those with disabilities can do the same thing that you can do. He became a hero and completed his journey by pedaling nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. At the end of the book, there's even this quote that says, in this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. And he shows us exactly what his best can be. I mentioned this in the clip, but this story does come with a trigger warning. Um, the mother in the story does pass away, so think about the students you are reading this to. Um, but his story in general is one of natural perseverance, grit, determination, and never giving up. And also because he did this, it shows just how far his reach can be because he helped so many others with disabilities. The second book I want to share with you is also one I've shared before. I love this book and it is called The Thing Lou Couldn't Do by Ashley Spires. This story is about a little girl named Lou who is brave and goes on many adventures. She has so much fun, but here she looks at a tree and is like, wait a second, this is new. I've never climbed a tree before. And all her friends want to climb up the tree and have a ball. But Lou is not so sure about it. She tries to suggest many other things and not go up the tree and play other games. But her friends climb up the tree and are having so much fun and she doesn't even try to do it. She comes up with many different excuses not to try it, and then finally comes to the realization that she thinks she can't climb the tree. And her friends are like, no, 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 we'll show you how you can do it. But she's still too scared to try. She finally realizes, hmm, okay, that does look pretty great. Maybe I could try to climb the tree, or maybe I could figure out a way to get up the tree without actually climbing it. By the end, she convinces herself that she is brave enough to try climbing up the tree, even if she doesn't succeed. So she starts to climb and thud, she falls. And her friends tell her, hey, you didn't get up there yet. You can try again. Maybe she'll come back tomorrow. 
And my favorite thing about this book, which I have shared every time I read this book, is that at the end of the story, she still hasn't made it up the tree. On the last page, it just says, after all, Lou loves an adventure. There is something so satisfying to me as a teacher and a parent that at the end of the story, she's still like, you know, halfway up the tree and she hasn't made it yet. So many of our kids' stories end with this like happy ending. She might be already at the top. Look how fast that was. Look how easy it was. And this book kind of illustrates that, you know, she's not done yet. She hasn't made it to the top of the tree, but we can still celebrate the bravery and success that she had by practicing it and the determination that she's showing because she's still going to work on it and it might take a little bit longer and that's okay. I love, love, love this book. All right, book three I wanna share is one I can't find my own personal copy of right now, but it's definitely still worth sharing, and that is Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed by Mo Willems. Now, this Mo Willems book is one that was lesser known to me, but it still brings all the giggles of a classic Mo Willems story. I love this one for teaching about perseverance because it's about a naked mole rat named Wilbur, and he likes to get dressed. He doesn't like to be naked, even though all the other naked mole rats are naked. He likes to wear clothes, but people tease him and make fun of him. But he still perseveres in showing his own true personality and identity by wearing those clothes. He finally brings up to his grandfather, you know, the leader of all the mole rats, you know, why do we have to be naked? Why does this have to be our thing? How does it really change who I am if I just want to wear clothes? And by the end of the story, not only does he find other mole rats who also like to wear clothes, but he finds out that we're all still the same inside, even if we're wearing clothes or if we're not. Now again, not only does this book bring a lot of engagement because it is goofy and it is funny and Mo Willem writes it and he's just a genius, but also I love this book because here the perseverance is talking about uh, something about like our physical looks and appearance, right? Something we choose to wear and other people might think that I shouldn't be wearing it or they don't like the way it looks or they have their own, you know, personal opinions, which is something that happens a lot in our students' lives. And the book teaches that here, Wilbur the mole rat, he doesn't need to conform to what other people think he should wear. He finds out and he sticks it out and he perseveres showing his own true color. Not only do I love that message for our students, but also I like that it touches upon a different type of perseverance. Um, a lot of the other ones, climbing a tree, learning to ride a bike with a disability, are very physical ones. This kind of pushes through that perseverance of um, not necessarily being bullied because he wasn't really bullied in the story, but he was teased. So pushing through that kind of personal perseverance of I'm not going to care what other people say about me and I'm still going to be myself and I'm not going to conform just because others say I should. So I love that one. The fourth book I wanna share is Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats. This book definitely highlights perseverance, but I would read this while reading a few other Ezra Jack Keats books just to talk about the beautiful illustrations and the stories that he writes in such a simple but meaningful way. This story is about Peter, the same Peter from Snowy Day, and one day he saw a boy playing with his dog, and whenever the boy would whistle, the dog ran right to him. So Peter wanted to whistle. He tried to whistle, but nothing came out. That's when he saw his dog, Willie, and he was like, hmm, I really want to whistle so the dog comes to me, so Willie comes to me just like the other bigger boy. So he continues to play and go on these little adventures and he just keeps trying to whistle. He blew till his cheeks were tired, even though nothing came out. He looked in a mirror and tried to whistle. He kept trying to whistle in front of his mother, but it was not happening. It was taking a lot longer than he initially thought. Finally, along his adventure, he hides under a box and he continues to try to whistle until suddenly a real whistle came out. He was so proud that he showed his mom and dad how he could whistle and they were proud of him too. And he just kept whistling all the way to the store and all the way back. Ezra Jack Keats books are so simple, but also meaningful. And that is why I love these stories. Um, whistling is such a funny one because it's very relevant to, you know, first and second graders. My son was also learning how to whistle and once he could finally do it, it didn't stop for like a long time because he was like, listen, listen to what I can do. He was so proud of himself to hear somebody else do something and then to continue to practice and practice and practice until you can do it yourself is very satisfying. And I think that shows in this book. All right, in the last book, book number five, that I wanna share with you to teach about perseverance is After the Fall by Dan Santat. Now, I love this book. It is about Humpty Dumpty who sat on a wall. So many of your students will be familiar with that rhyme. And he mentions how not only did he fall off the wall and crack into pieces and people put him back together again, 
But something had changed after he fell off the wall. He was now scared of heights, even though he used to love sitting up on that wall and being near the birds. For a little while, he decided he never wanted to go back up there again. He did not want to risk falling. So instead, he would look at the birds from down below. And even though that was nice, it just wasn't the same. So he came up with an idea to build his own paper plane that looks like a bird. And he mentions that during that part, it was actually really difficult to come up with the paper plane that he wanted to make. He kept getting cuts and having to start over and over, but he persevered and made this beautiful paper plane that looks just like a bird. Through that smaller lesson of persevering, he learned that he might be brave enough to climb up that wall again. So he goes slowly, step after step, rung after rung, as he climbs up the ladder and finally gets to the top. As he's sitting up on the wall again, he realizes that, you know what, accidents happen. It was nobody's fault that he fell off that wall. And he was brave enough to realize that he can get back up there and try it again to enjoy what he loves. I also love the message at the end of this book where he says, hopefully you don't remember me just as the egg that falls off the wall, but as the egg that gets back up and that life begins when you get back up. This is such a great story to really illustrate those accidents that do happen and that sometimes it's no one's fault. And even though it scares you a little bit, we know that we can get back up there, we can try again so we can continue enjoying what we love. All right, so there were five of my favorite picture books to really illustrate perseverance for your K through two students. I would love to know from you if there were any of those you haven't heard of before or ones that you're excited to read to your own students. And always, I love to know if there are any other picture books you also love for teaching this skill. Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.